Anime. It's one of the most popular forms of media in the entire world. Nowadays, it seems like the only thing people consume more of is porn, and depending who you're talking to, those two things might be one and the same? Anyway, whether you're talking about well-known anime titles or referencing its hidden gems, the medium itself has so many great stories to offer. From compelling characters to expansive worlds, harrowing journeys, and everything else in between. There are very few forms of media making stories as captivating as these Japanese-made animated series. That being said, while the quality of these stories have always been high, it still was a long journey for anime to reach its current mainstream acceptance in the United States. While the recent mainstream embrace of anime in America has been great for fans and creators alike, I began wondering, why the shift in Western audiences' attitudes toward the genre, and is this positive reception here to stay? On that note, what's good everyone, Timon here and this is a closer look at anime in the modern day. And while I won't be going into plot details for any of the series mentioned in this video, because of the footage we'll be using, a spoiler warning is in order, just to be safe. Okay, so to start, let's make sure we're on the same page about what exactly anime is. Anime originated in Japan. The word itself was derived from the American word animation, and within Japan it describes all animated works regardless of origin. In contrast, in other parts of the world, the word anime refers to animations made specifically within Japan. In Western countries like the United States, animations that are made outside of Japan but feature an art style similar to those seen in their Japanese counterparts are considered anime influence. A couple examples of such shows include The Boondocks and Avatar The Last Airbender. So from here on out, when I say the word anime, no, I'm talking about animated series originally made and produced in Japan. Now, animes are usually made from manga, which are published in bigger form publications. While this might be common knowledge, for those who may not know, Manga is comparable to comic books in the United States. The only difference is that they usually feature one continuous storyline which pick up from volume to volume, while comics, for the most part, tend to reset their worlds to the end of an arc, leaving the door open for more stories to be told featuring the characters and the world, without having to commit to the consequences of the events that happened in the last writer's run. Weekly Shonen Jump, which is the most popular magazine that publishes manga in Japan, has given us iconic stories like Naruto, Dragon Ball, One Piece, Hunter x Hunter, Death Note, My Hero Academia, and many, many more. These stories will go on to make some of the most popular animated series ever created, and are probably some of the first that come to mind when you think of anime. While the history of anime and the process that goes into turning a manga into an anime are fascinating, that's not what we're here to discuss. We're here to talk about why, all of a sudden, everyone and their fucking mother seems to be getting into anime. Like seriously, out of nowhere, being into anime is the new social equivalent of having airpods when they first dropped. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not some toxic fan that doesn't want to see anyone but manga readers or hardcore anime enthusiasts enjoying these stories. The worst kinds of fans are the ones who try to hoard away the things they're into like Smeagol with the One Ring, who's always a good reminder that if you allow the paranoia of guarding something you love to consume you, odds are it'll turn you batshit crazy. And yes, that same logic applies to fandoms. So, the last thing I want is to be that asshole yelling at people over the internet about why someone's a fake anime fan. That being said, it's interesting to see the shift in perception around anime recently. Growing up in the United States, I used to get roasted for liking anime all the time. Like seriously, fifth grade was hell. Back then, there was no mercy. They dead ass used to hit me with the tentacle porn allegations every day, when whole time all I was doing was holding back tears while reading part one of Naruto. Y'all, shit got so bad that I literally stopped reading manga in school and kept liking anime to myself from the 6th grade on. I was too afraid of the backlash. And trust me, I'm not exaggerating. I saw it firsthand, and if you grew up in the states, I'm sure you did too. Everyone knew the fate of the dreaded anime kids. And at the end of the day, no one wanted any piece of it. Now, after I graduated high school back in 2016 and was able to go off on my own and find my own people, I thankfully was able to fully embrace my love for anime and manga once again. This past couple years, however, I've noticed I wasn't alone in this. I remember seeing Meg the Stallion post a picture of herself in a Todoroki cosplay on social media and thinking to myself, something shifted. Fast forward a bit to the first lockdown this past March and enter the app everyone loves to hate, TikTok. When you hop on TikTok, you're bound to see, well, a lot of things. Whether it be cringy dance trends, funny sketches, ridiculously attractive people posting thirst traps, fitness influencers, artists of all mediums, or anything else in between, I'm sure you can find it by scrolling through the app. I was surprised, however, at how many TikToks I saw about different animes. Whether it be posts about popular classics like Naruto, Dragon Ball, and One Piece, 
or cosplays from newer shows like My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, and Attack on Titan. The sheer love for anime on the app took me off guard. Now, there are billions of users on TikTok. It makes sense that you might see a niche of users posting anime-related content, whether it be cosplays or fan cams. That being said, big influencers and other celebrities on the app were posting about anime too. This extended to outside of the confines of TikTok as well. All of a sudden, liking anime is cool. More kids than ever before in the States are watching anime and at a younger age too. Not only do they have the celebrity co-sign from big names like Michael B. Jordan, Pharrell Williams, Kanye West, Lil Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, Snoop Dogg, Samuel L. Jackson, Quentin Tarantino, Billie Eilish, Ariana Grande, Zac Efron, and more, but if you scroll through any social media, you're sure to find content from an anime being used as a meme. If not, you're bound to run into an account that has an anime character as its profile picture. No, seriously, scroll on Twitter for five minutes, and if you don't come across one of those two things, then you're either following absolutely no one or more than likely a dirty little liar. Now, all of that being said, I think the reason for the change in attitudes toward anime can be summarized into two concise points. The first is that our modern day society, being a lot more open-minded, specifically in younger generations, has helped destigmatize a lot of the high-key racist perceptions people had about the art form just because it was made in Japan. Remember when I said they used to bully me by saying I was reading tentacle porn? Yeah, racist as fuck. Anyway, though the fact that these stories were imported was a negative in the past, in our modern day, this is a plus as different cultures are being embraced like never before. Though I'm speaking in gross generalizations here, and with the advent of modern PC culture, writing something off as weird just because it is different isn't going to fly well. Unless you're a major award show. The second, celebrities and influencers talking about their love for anime in public help to make it something the average person in the western world would be willing to give a chance. I wish there was more to it than this, but that's really it in my opinion. For some people, all it takes is someone with influence giving something a cosign to validate it in their minds. With this, I do think black culture and black celebrities had a big impact on why Americans have accepted anime in recent years, but that's a whole different topic for another day. In my opinion, it's that simple. Anime was only ever considered weird in the states because it was something different from a different place. People often ridicule things that don't make sense to them, especially when it comes from a place and culture they don't understand. That being said, it doesn't make any of their behavior okay. The sentiments that led to anime being ridiculed line racist and xenophobic ways of thinking. Like to write off anime for being weird but loving a show like Game of Thrones makes no sense in my opinion. If you can watch a show with literal incest in it, I don't think an animated adventure show is where you should draw the line. Fortunately, as time has passed, more and more people have been able to see anime for the amazing art form that it is. Who knows, maybe anime has been this popular the whole time and all the kids who made fun of people like me were secretly writing Code Geass fanfictions on the low. Maybe nerd media becoming the dominating force in film and television helped usher in this new mindset. Maybe it really was the memes! Whatever the case may be, I couldn't be more excited to live in a day and age where liking anime is a flex. Like baddies I try to shoot my shot with steady be having shit like anime and chill in their bios nowadays. I think I can speak for everyone who's a fan of these stories when I say that's something we can all feel good about. Unless you're an annoying smeagol ass motherfucker, then you need to go to therapy and learn how to not be a toxic fan. Just saying. Thanks for watching. What do you think about the video? Were you always a big fan of anime? Just getting into it? Could you not care less? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're there, like and subscribe to keep up with our latest content. And don't forget to follow The Next Wave on social media. Our handle everywhere is at the next wave shot. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at T-I-I-M-O-N underscore. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'm Timon, and for everyone here at The Next Wave, until next time.